dish. So maybe let's make it a little bit normal defense. So um, Vitaly Goyev, we are here today for uh, the defense of your uh, thesis entitled Quantum Monte Carlo Methods for Electronic Structure Calculations Application to Hydrogen at Extreme Conditions. In front of the jury, uh, some of us are here, uh, Lucia Reining, Federica Agostini, Paul Loubet, and we, remotely we have Chris Picard, um, Michele Casula, and your thesis uh, advisors, Daniel Borgis here, Carlo Pierleoni, and Marcus Holtzman online. So you have about 45 minutes for presenting your work, and then we we'll follow a discussion with all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and welcome um, today. And thank you for coming, and also connecting. I appreciate this uh, during this time. I will present you my work uh, of the past three years, which was supervised by Carlo Pierleoni, Daniel Bourgis, and also uh, Marcus Holtzman. I would like to uh, first discuss the problem of electrons and ions interacting in matter. And the state of the system can be completely determined by um, Schrodinger equation, which in its time-dependent formalism states that if Hamiltonian applied to a wave function, it will equal to a time derivative of a wave function. And the wave function is a state of the system at each position and time. And the Hamiltonian, in its generic non-relativistic form, is a sum of a kinetic energy of ions, kinetic energy of electrons, and the Coulomb pair interaction between every particle. And so what can we, what problems can we solve knowing the solution of this equation? And to me, the most fascinating uh, problem was always phase transitions, which uh, can be of different kind. For example, structural, like melting of solid, or metal insulator, or even more sophisticated quantum uh, phase transitions like superconductivity or superfluidity. And in my thesis, I mostly worked on metal insulator transition by developing a method to study energy gaps or band gaps with quantum Monte Carlo. Further, I have generalized this method to um, zero and finite temperature crystals and liquids and then apply this methodology to study metallization of liquid and solid hydrogen. And solid hydrogen, solid metallic hydrogen, due to its lightness, is an ideal candidate for room temperature uh, superconductor. And as well, I have worked on benchmarking different density functionals uh, for hydrogen. And so, um, almost 90 years ago, metallic hydrogen was first predicted by Wigner and Huntington in 1935, and their prediction was that hydrogen would turn metal at around 25 gigapascal, a pressure inimaginable by uh, that time. However, the, observation of, the observations of nowadays uh, tell us that the transition would be around 400 GPA, more than 10 times larger than the initial prediction. And indeed, hydrogen being a very simple material and the solution of Schrodinger equation for hydrogen atom was completely known. Therefore, it was easy to assume that the phase diagram of hydrogen <coughs> is simple, an assumption which turned out not to be true. And we know as well that at low pressure, hydrogen is insulating molecular crystal. And therefore, already in this work, there was predicted that there might be uh, metallic hydrogen even at molecular phase, molecular crystalline phase. And so here we now, 90 years later, with the phase diagram of hydrogen being extremely rich and interesting with number of solid phases reaching uh, six, each with different crystalline structure. And uh, the race to achieve metallic hydrogen had pushed the transition line at around 400 GPA. And this race finally seems to be over with three uh, most recent experimental works. One done by a group of aeromets, which by measuring resistivity put it, put, predict that hydrogen would turn semi-metal at around 360 GPA further. A group of Silvera, by measuring reflectivity, had predicted, um, had put the transition at around 495 GPA. And finally, 
Mm, in a previous, in uh, this year, a group of uh, Paul Lubert, by measuring uh, spectroscopical uh, properties, put this transition at 425 GPA. And in the liquid, there is also no uh, consensus on the position of a transition line from molecular to atomic hydrogen, and also um, there are debates whether the metallization in liquid occurs uh, with the transition, with the molecular dissociation. And so experiments in hydrogen, in solid hydrogen, are usually done in diamond anvil cell or in liquid sometimes by a shock compression. And these experiments are extremely difficult, uh, mostly because hydrogen being very light material, therefore it's very diffusive and reactive and uh, causes, usually causes a failure of diamonds. And so what can us, the theoreticians, contribute to study hydrogen metallization? From the theoretical side, we know that metal can be characterized by zero energy gap, which is the energy to remove, to add an electron minus the energy to remove one. And in the single electron picture, um, if plotting single electron eigenvalues as a function of Bloch crystal momentum, band structure can be produced and from where the band gap or energy gap is naturally inferred as the maximum of conduction band minus the minimum of max minimum of conduction band minus the maximum of a valence band. And if further computing conductivity for such a gapped system, the AC uh, conductivity with its DC component at zero uh, frequency, the DC component would be zero. And if further the bands overlap, meaning the gap, uh, meaning the closure of the gap, the DC conductivity rises until finally by more uh, overlapping bands, therefore the unoccupied states get more occupied, the DC uh, conductivity reaches at its peak and the AC conductivity has a Druder form, which is a good characteristic of a metal. The hydrogen as well, as I said, the simplest element and Hamiltonian of which is completely known. Therefore, it's an ideal uh, playground to test new methods, new theoretical methods. And um, today I will present you one of those methods to study that I have developed to study band gaps with quantum Monte Carlo. Further, I will uh, discuss the gap closure of uh, solid ideal hydro crystalline hydrogen. And before going to present you the results of the quantum um, crystals, and indeed hydrogen is a quantum material because due to its lightness and therefore zero point uh, motion is important, that I will generalize the methodology to compute band gaps to include a zero point renormalization. And after discussing the results of um, gap closure of quantum crystals, I'll discuss the optical properties of hydrogen crystals. And the main approximation done in my work is Born-Oppenheimer approximation, which allows for decoupling of a full electron proton Hamiltonian, which is the kinetic energy of protons, kinetic energy of electrons, plus the potential energy between the pairs of protons, electrons, and electron protons. And to decouple this problem, um, we can define an ansatz where we split the wave function into a um, photonic and electronic part, and the electronic part being an eigen function of electronic Hamiltonian. And further, uh, recalling that the mass of electron is smaller, way smaller than the mass of nuclei, therefore the kinetic energy, the, the, the velocity of electrons is way smaller, and we can neglect the kinetic energy operator acting, kinetic energy operator of protons acting on um, uh, electronic wave function, and therefore arriving to uh, a, a diabatic approximation where the electronic problem is substituted by um, electronic eigenvalues E alpha R, which are the eigenvalues of electronic Hamiltonian. Further, assuming that the temperature is low 
and therefore the electrons are in their ground state, the Born-Oppenheimer approximation that we use in our, in the form that we use in our work, can be invoked. And to sample, to solve the nuclear problem, we used couple electron ion Monte Carlo, which is path integral Monte Carlo for um, nuclei to solve nuclear problem and quantum Monte Carlo for electronic problem. And quantum Monte Carlo being a wave function based method, therefore the choice of a wave function is crucial and usually uh, it's done in the form of a slater gesture where the slater determinant with orbitals coming from DFT, density functional theory, in our case, are multiplied by a gesture correlation factor. And therefore, if then we can parameterize this wave function and uh, sample it directly with Monte Carlo. And by further optimizing the uh, parameters, we can use the variational principle to optimize the parameters. Um, and from, from where the name variational Monte Carlo comes. And the variational principle tells that if for any wave function, uh, trial wave function, we compute variational energy, it will always be larger than the ground state energy. Variational Monte Carlo is very efficient, however, sensitive to a choice of a trial wave function method. Therefore, to achieve a better accuracy, it's uh, one can project the wave function by applying a projector operator in imaginary time and further in, in imaginary time beta and further in infinite imaginary time uh, one can project out the ground state. So the, this projection method are called either reputation quantum Monte Carlo or diffusion Monte Carlo depending on the implementation. In this method being exact for bosons, however, for fermions, the wave function has to change signs and therefore uh, one has to treat separately different parts of a wave function and approximate zeros of wave function or the nodes. And the usual approximation done is fixed node approximation which relies on the nodes of a Slater determinant. And luckily, in fixed node approximation, the variational principle still holds. The, all the accuracy comes with its price, and in our case, the price being computational cost. And for accurate uh, reputation QMC, a benchmark on Marconi KNL machine in Chineka, each electron step takes about 0.1 seconds. And to sample, to converge the calculations, one would have to do at least 300,000 steps, which amounts <coughs> to eight hours of wall time. Luckily, polarization schemes over twist or K vectors are available. And to, as I said, to sample the nuclear space, we used couple of nine Monte Carlo with VMC, and therefore the time to do each proton move increases due to the fact that for each proton move we would have to do a separate variational Monte Carlo calculation. Therefore, again on the same machine, uh, the each proton move takes about 70 seconds, and to properly sample the nuclear space, we would have to do 20,000 uh, protonic moves, which amounts to almost 400 hours of wall time. And here, luckily as well, the precision schemes available over the path integral slices and also twist or K points. And in my work, I mostly use um, quantum Monte Carlo rotation, quantum Monte Carlo, and in total it took about 6 million core hours. And however, th these calculations were based on nuclear um, configurations that were sampled by couple of nine previously, which uh, amounted to about 40 million core hours. And so, to treat size effects, single electron size effects in QMC as in DFT, one can use, um, one can do a brilliant zone integration, and the brilliant zone being a reciprocal space of a crystalline cell. And the example of a brilliant zone for typical hydrogen crystal is given here. And the integration can be achieved by assigning a phase 
each time to a wave function, each time an electron wraps around its uh, simulation cell. And in electron, in single electron uh, theory, as I already mentioned, the egg, single electron eigenvalue is plotted as a mm. Brillouin zone path, which is indicated here. The band structure is produced. However, in QMC, to treat size effects, we usually have to run, have to use supercells. And the Brillouin zone of a supercell is usually is smaller than the Brillouin zone of a uh, primitive cell. And therefore, the twist vectors are not equivalent to the crystal uh, momentum. And the proper um, unfolding of a supercell Brillouin zone onto the supercell of a primitive cell, of, onto the Brillouin zone of a primitive cell has to be done. And in practice, the twist angles can be chosen on a grid, and each independent calculation for each grid point can be done. So then it's natural to resolve the electron addition and removal energies in twist. And further, uh, by doing the unfolding, we can map the addition and removal energies of QMC onto the band structure and from here, the minimal or indirect gap can be directly read as the minimum energy net required to add an electron minus maximum energy to remove one. And the vertical or direct gap can be seen as a minimum energy difference in the same crystal momentum. However, here, as I said, one has to unfold the Brillouin zone and determine the crystal moment. And one, I would say, crucial uh, size effects in QMC are coming from uh, many body correlations, which are usually treated by extrapolating structure factor, which contains information about potential and kinetic energy. And for example, on the for electron addition and removal energies and for the gaps, we see that the convergence with the size is uh, slow and proportional to the linear system size L. For example, for silicon, we see clearly this dependency. And just to give you an idea, to run eight atom cell <coughs> takes about 1,000, on the order 1,000 core hours. And for a larger cell of 216 electrons, uh, atoms, it takes around a million core hours. So developing an effective scheme to treat size effects is important also from the computational uh, perspective. And so in this work, we have proposed a scheme which, uh, with which we can successfully treat size effects, for example, for silicon, even for smallest system. And this scheme relies on a structure factor difference between the structure factor of um, extra or without one electron minus the structure factor of a neutral system. And we have demonstrated that if this difference um, at a zero momentum limit goes to a constant, and moreover, the sum of SK plus and SK minus in the zero momentum limit and infinite crystal cell is nothing but inverse dielectric constant. And therefore, to correct, for example, potential energy, uh, which the, the size effects, potential size effects on potential energy, which are mostly coming from the fact that we work in a discrete momentum space, we would just have to extrapolate the structure factor or sometimes infer the corrections from the notion of the electric constant. And this result, this scheme, as well benchmarked on carbon and applied to solid and liquid hydrogen. We can as well generalize the electron addition and removal problem onto the fractional number of electrons, which can be done in a grand canonical ensemble, where an optimal number of electrons at each chemical potential and twist is the one that optimizes ground potential at um, infinite at zero zero temperature. 
And further, by uh, twist averaging the optimal number of electrons and dividing by the volume, we get the mean electronic density, which is nothing but an integrated density of states, which can be plotted together with the integrated density of states for a single electron theory, which allows for benchmarking of different density functions. If then plotting a uh, ground state energy density as a function of mean electron density, we see clearly the change of slope at the point where the number of electrons equal to number of protons, which is nothing but a fundamental gap, and which also, the fundamental gap also can be inferred as the width of the plateau region in the mean electron density. So before presenting you the results, of a gap closure of um, solid ideal hydrogen, I would, I, it's necessary to talk about different phases of hydrogen, different crystalline structures. In uh, my work, I focused on phase three and phase four of hydrogen. Phase three being a phase where hydrogen turns metallic, and phase four is the phase at higher temperature. Uh, unfortunately, we, we almost Unfortunately, we don't have an experimental information on the crystal structure, and therefore uh, we have to use theoretical predictions, which were done by random structure search with DFTPB functional by Chris Picard and colleagues. And so for phase three, we considered two structures, two most uh, probable structures based on free energy calculations of McMinnis. And these two, and for phase four, we consider just one structure. And this, all three structures are similar, meaning that they are layered molecular uh, crystals. And the C2C with 24 atom cells has its molecules slightly tilted with respect to the plane. And CMCA with 12 um, atoms per primitive cell has molecules par parallel to the plane. And PC48 with 48 atoms per primitive cell um, has uh, alternating bond length between different layers. So if the fundamental gap computed for C2C crystalline hydrogen, we get a perfect agreement with the GW calculations done by McMinnis and a good agreement with previous QMC calculations by Azadi, which we relied on scissor correcting the density uh, function of the DFT band structure. However, we don't have an agreement with other GW calculations, which is due to the fact that in their calculations they use PBE functional to optimize the structure, the crystalline structure, and we use Van der Waals DF functional to optimize the structure. Um, and Van der Waals DF functional was shown to be more um, consistent with the QMC results, which was shown by Raymond Clay. And if computing the gap of a CMC12 structure, we see that it's closing earlier, the gap closing earlier at around 400, and in general, the gaps are slightly lower than for C2C. And for, for PC48, the gaps are slightly higher, but somehow comparable to C2C. And so before discussing the results for um, quantum crystal, it's necessary to generalize the method, the electronic structure method, onto finite and zero temperature uh, crystals, which I repeat was done. The proton configurations, which were obtained from couple electron Monte Carlo, which is path integral Monte Carlo for nuclei and quantum Monte Carlo for electrons. And we work in born Oppenheimer approximation, and for uh, renormalization, we considered 40 independent nuclear configurations. So in canonical ensemble, an energy to add or remove an electron now would be the difference of a free energy, which, assuming that the Born-Oppenheimer nuclear energy surface is not changing upon the changing of number of electrons, we can write as the um, electronic energy difference to add or remove an electron, which is averaged over born Oppenheimer electronic energy surface, which is average over nuclear configurations that were obtained with born Oppenheimer 
uh, electronic energy surface of a neutral system, meaning that number of electrons equal number of protons. And therefore, if this uh, electron addition removal energies are uh, plotted on top of the band structure, we see immediately a strong reduction of the gap. We can as well generalize this onto the grand canonical ensemble, where now the uh, energies are substituted by the free energies, and again, assuming the same uh, approximation where the nuclear uh, energy surface is not changing upon different number of uh, electrons, we can rewrite the uh, free energy differences again as the difference of the electronic energy to add a remove an electron averaged over the nuclear configuration sampled with the born oppenheimer electronic energy surface of a neutral system. And therefore, plotting a mean electron density for hydrogen, for C2C hydrogen at 250 GPA and 200 Kelvin, plotting it on top of um, the mean electron density of ideal system, we immediately see a reduction of the gap uh, proportional to two electron volts. And here again, the uh, gap can be inferred as the width of the plateau. And we can as well generalize uh, this scheme onto the single electron theory and plot the integrated density of states uh, of a quantum crystal computed, for example, with HSC functional. And further, we can benchmark different functionals for quantum crystals as well. And so to, when computing fundamental energy gaps of different crystalline structures for different temperatures, pressures uh, of uh, hydrogen, we first notice that the structural difference, the difference between different structures is almost lost. Uh, with C2C uh, gap closing slightly later than other structures. And the temperature effects are also small, which means that the correction mostly comes from zero-point energy. The correction of the gap mostly comes from zero-point energy. Further, we can compare the fundamental energy gaps with an experimental observations, uh, which were based on optical absorption, which were done by extrapolating optical absorption. And we see, uh, if compared the C2C structure and the exp experiment, we see uh, that our gap is slightly smaller, but comparable to experiment. However, if then compared, comparing a direct gap, which is also uh, an experimental direct gap, can be also inferred from the optical absorption with a different criteria, by which was obtained, the experimental direct gap was obtained by um, assigning a gap when absorption reaches 30,000 centimeters minus one. And so if, if for C2C, uh, C2C results computed with QMC, we see a perfect agreement with the direct gap um, computed by Paul Lubert, obtained by Paul Lubert. However, we don't see uh, an abrupt closure of the gap, which was reported in experiment. And we assign this to the fact that the candidate structure, C2C or CMC12, are not good uh, candidate structures above 425 GPA. However, the fact that our indirect gap closes at around 360 GPA, which indicates that the system enters a semi-metallic state is in a qualitative agreement with the Eremet um, predictions. So the better picture can be seen by discussing the integrated density of states, where for a gapped system, the density of states, which is the slope of the integrated density of states, the density of states at the gap is zero. And further, by increasing pressure, the density of states, the slope gets finite and the density of state gradually increases, meaning that the system enters a semi-metallic state. And when further, the direct gap is closed, and the density of states is uh, 
has a constant is constant means that which means that the system enters a metallic state and to address to better address the comparison with experiment we as well computed optical properties with uh, which which was done with single electron Kuba Greenwood formalism which we ge then generalized to find a temperature by uh, Boltzmann averaging over the initial nuclear states chi alpha n and the averaging we ev the averaging quantity contains the sum over the final nuclear states chi uh, beta m contains the transition matrix electronic transition matrix element from uh, electron state alpha to electron state beta and the eigenvalues epsilon alpha n which are nothing but the born oppenheimer uh, electronic eigenvalues epsilon alpha, alpha r are integrated over the nuclear states and so the to apply this formula it was first proposed by William and Lux and they call this uh, approximation semi-classical which amounts to in inserting a delta function inside the matrix element which allows for uh, further invoking a completeness relation and putting a sum of our final states to one. And further, if neglecting all the commutators with kinetic energy, we can arrive to a final um, expression for the semi-classical averaging, which uh, is nothing but computing conductivity at each nuclear configuration and then averaging it. And this uh, way of averaging was applied to study optical absorption of silicon by Justino, by the group of Justino, where they got, uh, where they correctly captured their normalization due to the temperature effects, and also correctly captured the temperature behavior of the absorption. However, if this procedure applied to hydrogen, we don't have a satisfactory agreement with um, experimental absorption and therefore we propose a different scheme which we call quantum averaging because quantum hydrogen is a quantum material and this scheme amounts to neglecting the eigenvalue differences between different nuclear states with respect to the eigenvalue differences between different uh, born Oppenheimer electronic state, which then again allows for invoking a completeness relation and putting the sum over the final state to one. And further, we can assume that the temperature is low, so the phonons are not excited, and we can uh, substitute the eigenvalue difference as the uh, Boltzmann averaging over the nuclear configurations of. Um, born Oppenheimer eigenvalues, epsilon alpha r. And then if this procedure, quantum, if this quantum averaging applied to hydrogen, we first notice an improved agreement with experiment for 300 GPA. Uh, also, we notice a more consistent result compared to the indirect gap, which is indicated uh, with lines here. And the difference between the different way of averaging is only noticeable at low absorption, which is if looking at the uh, absorption above 400, full absorption, the difference now is negligible. And then uh, computing an optical absorption for different uh, pressures and uh, for C2C hydrogen at 200 Kelvin, we can directly compare it to the experimental results. And first we see that the experimental <coughs> criteria to assign a direct gap when the absorption reaches 30,000 centimeters minus one, um, this criteria cannot be applied to a theoretical spectra where we put the direct gaps with a red dot, and 
for low pressure, this can be somehow applied, but not for high pressure. We put for higher pressure. And most importantly, we observe a somehow higher absorption uh, intensity compared to experiment, which is a good indicator uh, that one would have to consider a better theory, for example, uh, beta salpeter or quantum Monte Carlo, even one day. And with this, I'd like to conclude. Uh, today, I told you my talk, my presentation was split in two parts. First, theoretical and logical part, and then its application to study metallization of solid hydrogen. In the theoretical part, I discussed a new method to compute energy or band gaps with quantum Monte Carlo. Further, I have introduced a scheme uh, to size correct the gaps and um, electronic addition and removal energies. And then I generalized this scheme uh, to include zero point renormalization, zero point nuclear renormalization. And as well, I discussed. Um, I discussed a new formalism for uh, zero-point and thermal uh, renormalization of Kuba-Greenwood optical uh, properties. Uh, further, if this procedure applied to study a gap emetalization of solid hydrogen, we first notice that the reduction due to the zero-point effect is quite large, which is more than two electron volts. The gap, the fundamental minimal energy gap, closes at around 360 GPA. And further, the system enters a semi-metallic state in consistence in qualitative agreement with findings of aromats. And then, uh, by closing a direct gap, which is in agreement with findings of Paul Lubert, we s but then, upon closure of the direct gap, the system enters a metallic state. Concerning the optical properties, we see that the theoretical uh, theoretical absorption computed with single electron theory gives somehow higher uh, absorption intensities compared to experimental results. And I'd like to thank first my supervisor, <coughs> Carlo Perleoni, for always being present for me and for his support. Also, I'd like to thank Marcus Holtzman for his um, innumerable discussions that I enjoyed immensely. Also, I'd like to thank my collaborators from the States, David Seperley and Paul Young. And as well, my uh, office mate, Michele, and also uh, Daniel Borges for his uh, support in innumerable bureaucracy, innumerable uh, French bureaucracy. Uh, as well, I, will, I would like to thank uh, all uh, my colleagues from Maison de la Simulation and the director, Edouard, and a special thank to Marcial, who made all this event possible today. And as well, um, I'll thank my family, my fiancé, who came here to support me today, and my parents uh, for their support. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vitaly. Um, so now we'll uh, go on with the discussion uh, with the jury. Thank you very much for the uh, very nice uh, presentation. I think I can say that. Um, unfortunately, we'll have, with some time constraints, with members, some members of the jury, so we'll ask uh, members of the jury to limit to about 15-20 uh, minutes the discussion. We'll start with the uh, reviewers, so probably Lucia, if you may. Michele, maybe. Michele, maybe. Mm -hmm. Are you online?